Hurricane Aaron has formed in the Atlantic. Category 1 winds 75 miles per hour. This is the first hurricane of the season. The time now is 10.05. Thank you everyone for joining. Gusts are up to 90 miles per hour. Wind is out of the west-northwest at 18 miles per hour. Now I haven't edited this forecast cone, so we'll see how it looks. Uh, but some key times is... Well, initially, uh, we were looking at Friday being when this becomes a hurricane. That has already happened now as of the 10 a.m. update. Additionally, Category 4, major hurricane. So major hurricane as early as Sunday morning, uh, maybe even Friday or Saturday evening. Saturday evening, we're talking into Sunday morning, the chance for a major hurricane. Category 4, Sunday into Monday, and then it continues to move north. Somewhere there between Bermuda and uh those famous islands, the North Carolina islands, Outer Banks, somewhere between Bermuda and the Outer Banks, we are looking at the storm tracking. Uh, so it does look like it will mostly stay in the Atlantic, but rip current still a huge concern across the East Coast as we head into next week. These are your tropical thoughts. I'm meteorologist Carly Smith. Thank you so much for watching. Danger surf and rip current risk, as I mentioned, is one of the leading headlines with Hurricane Aaron. Tropical storm force winds on the Leeward Islands, and additionally, we're tracking the tropical wave and impacts to South Texas. So now, from here on out, this live update is going to focus on South Texas and our chance of rainfall, where we're going to see the most rain and everything you need to know right here in the coastal bend as we see a tropical wave moving into our area. Thank you everyone for joining. I am meteorologist Carly Smith. The time now is 10.07. We're going to try to go through this fairly quickly so no one gets bored <laughs> essentially um, and I don't ramble on. Sometimes I can just ramble and then you miss the information because I have rambled and the goal is to avoid doing that and be to the point and get the details out. So we've talked about Aaron. Now we are moving on to our tropical storm. Hopefully as the view, the amount of people viewing has gone up. I want to thank everyone again for watching. Here's our total overview. So as of Friday at 10 a.m., that's when the update happened. We do have Hurricane Aaron. If you're just now joining, we went into those details earlier, so you'll have to watch the replay. But we also still just have a tropical wave. The Hurricane Hunters, they flew in the plane. They tried to find a center, a circulation center, a closed area of low pressure circulating around the region. They could not find that and so it is not going to become a tropical depression it is not going to get a forecast cone it is not going to get a name uh, because it's likely going to make landfall or move too close to land really for any of that to happen as we head into the lunch hour and early afternoon so earlier this morning when I was tracking it we'll retrack it uh, it looks like it could be arriving in the Brownsville area the center as around 1 p.m. So let's take a closer look at that tropical wave. It still has a medium chance of developing, but because it's so close to land, that chance is pretty low at this point in time. You can see the convection uh, just kind of spreading out. So that's how we're going to get the rain. It's almost like an outflow boundary, a burst of energy uh, as it gets closer to land. We have seen our cloud coverage kind of thicken or increase if you are looking to the south and east. That's been pretty fascinating through the morning hours. Here's my rambling. I'm rambling. Let's get to the point. Medium chance of development over the next three days. Our biggest impact or impact alert that we're highlighting or chance for tropical downpours. I'm not showing you the graphic. I always do this. Uh, this is our tropical overview. Now we'll get to the point. Hurricane Aaron formed. Our tropical wave Invest 98L is staying in Invest 98L. And look at this with the 10 a.m. update. It is now just a low chance of tropical development. So just a low chance of tropical development. They actually usually don't update that outlook at 10 a.m. That's usually a 7 a.m. update and then they'll do it again at 1 a.m. So that's interesting that they updated the outlook at 10 a.m. But I guess it's because it is so close to land. That center of the low, it's going to move north. So the X is now marking where the National Hurricane Center is 
putting the center of that low, and that's a lot closer to Brownsville now as we speak. So we'll see the low pressure move a little bit more north over the next three days. Our biggest impacts are Friday afternoon through Saturday morning. Storms are moving out by then, and it's turning hot and sunny again by Sunday. We do have a little cool down from this system. The biggest impact, again, this is if we had a ranking for the danger of the impact alert we've issued, this would be the lowest ranking. The biggest concern is that there's going to be periods potentially of some scattered heavy rain that could impact visibility. So just keep some rain gear handy. Be ready to drive slowly if you pass through one of these downpours and keep some tabs on the weather if you do have a Friday evening event. Cloud coverage has thickened to the north even now as we speak. It was clear skies to the north earlier this morning. 87 degrees right now, so we have warmed up. Southeast winds at 17 miles per hour, so the wind has picked up as well. Cloud coverage looking to the south as we speak. We didn't have quite as many cumulus clouds initially, so you could see just the wall that was associated with that tropical wave that is out in the Gulf. Again, it is not expected to become a tropical depression. The hurricane hunters could not find a center to that storm. I do think we make it into the low 90s this afternoon, but with off and on rain and more cloud coverage, I don't think we get above 95 across the coastal bend. Let's check out the current radar. We do have some spotty storms that have now popped up inland. This is along uh, 281 and Texas Highway 44 slash 359 there between San Diego and Alice, as well as 359 Orange Grove. It's already to the west of you, but we do, again, we've got some spotty showers that have popped up. Let's put this into motion. So over the last hour, they popped up there where we were seeing some convection through first edition there near Kingsville and Bishop. That is now intensified as we've gotten more daytime heat. So that's why we don't have blue skies anymore looking over there toward the west. When we look at the bigger picture, this is where our invest is. So our tropical wave, this is where we saw some rain earlier this morning. There is a spotty shower there between Concepcion and Falfurius. And now let's talk tropical wave invest 98L, 30 miles per hour, moving northwest at 16 miles per hour. National Hurricane Center has marked the center. Yeah, a little bit more north. I would agree with that. Um, I would say it's about if I had to mark the center, I can draw a new low. I would put it about right here. Um, it's really been moving more. If this stays on a more north path, that would provide us with more rainfall. So we'll see what happens um, because they marked that X a little bit more further out in the Gulf than I would have put it. I think it's pretty close to Brownsville right now. And then if we track this, so let's see if the low will stay. Yes. If we put a tracker on it, it's so moving at 16 miles per hour, not 1,625. That would be way too fast. If it moves northwest, again, a lot of the model data, maybe we'll take a look at the latest spaghetti plot runs, but a lot of the model data had it closer to Laredo. But anyway, uh, let's see, estimated timeline for what is a center. Again, a d closed center has not been found by the hurricane hunters, but you would see it approaching areas like Encino around 4.30, Rivera. This is a little earlier than, than what I was tracking this morning, but Rivera around 5.09, Kingsville 6.05, Hebronville there around 7.02. So this evening is when the center would be near us. Those winds, again, they're only at 30 miles per hour, and as it moves inland, it will only weaken. So I don't anticipate this to be a wind event, but we will see spotty showers like this off and on throughout the day. And so that's really our biggest impact. Again, it's very minimal. It's not a washout. It's not a guarantee that we see rain but it is close enough that we're talking about it, right? Let's take a look now at how the latest radar is verifying with the model initiation. So this is the latest satellite radar imagery, and this is how the model is initiating. Mm, it's close. The model has a lot more rain north than what is showing up right now. And as we take a closer look, 1040 
So this is showing it getting more of a westward push over Brownsville around 1 p.m. Like I said, the center around 1 p.m. And then it really weakens as it moves north. This has the center kind of nearing Falfurious. Again, I would say the peak wind 35 miles per hour for gust. Uh, sustained winds are 30 right now. That will likely weaken. Um, Alice could see some heavy rain picking up into this evening, especially if the center tracks over you like this model is indicating. And then it will continue to move north. So overall, it's still very scattered. I don't expect persistent rainfall in the coastal bend. I do expect the heaviest rain, let's go back, to be in the valley. So you'll see that here. There is a flood watch in place through 6 p.m. for Brownsville, uh, Cameron County, and Hidalgo County, Southern Hidalgo County. That's through 6 p.m. So you see the rain becoming much lighter by 6.30. Rainfall forecast. Again, heavy rainfall south of Kennedy County, not as much rainfall north here in the coastal bend. So I think we're lucky if some areas get an inch of rain. Most of us will be around a half an inch or less. We'll be measuring tenths of an inch to hundredths of an inch. Um, not so much inches, except for areas south of Kennedy County, closer to the valley. This is also where the Weather Prediction Center is highlighting a slight risk of flooding. And as I mentioned, there are flood watches in place for the Rio Grande Valley as well. So our main impact is tropical rain, stronger wind, higher surf. I put tornadoes on there because that is a factor, especially if it were to strengthen to a depression or a storm. But since it's staying weaker, tornadoes are unlikely. There is a chance for some lightning. But right now, I believe I have lightning turned on on these radar images. Yeah, so lightning is turned on. We're not seeing any lightning, which is a good thing. Uh, but for anyone that is headed to the beach, that would be my biggest concern. There is some lightning in these showers uh, there near Port Isabel and South Padre Island. So this is well offshore, but if you're surfing or things like that, you don't want lightning in the storms that are out there. Rain is not an issue, right? You're in the water. Wind could also be a bit gusty at times. Let's look at the wind. Yeah, I mean, there are some pockets of higher wind, but nothing is showing up, you know, with the bright colors showing like this is a crazy tight wind gradient or anything like that. So our winds have picked up. That is one of the issues that we will be tracking. It's going to be windier than we have been, which means we're going to get more waves than we have had. And so odds are surf spots on the beach are going to be pretty packed. So keep that in mind if you have plans to go to the beach. Uh, maybe avoid like JP would be unless you're surfing. Uh, here's a look, 24 mile per hour gusts reported at Flower Bluff, 21 Rockport, our, well, our buoys well offshore. Unfortunately, our closest buoys, the Freeport buoy should be reading a gust. I don't know why it's not, but well offshore, we've got 15 mile per hour sustained winds. So nothing too crazy. As far as our forecast for today goes, gusting up to 20, 30 miles per hour is likely peak gust if you get a thunderstorm around 35 miles per hour. What happened? Oh, I'm on Max 2. Max 2 doesn't have the beach camera. So that's our second weather computer. But uh, for the marine currents, we do have four foot swells. This is the Freeport buoy. See, it's reading 60 mile per hour gust. So I don't know what is going on with that graphic. But six second periods, our pressure is high. Finally, we're getting to the wave height forecast and Football scrimmage, okay, football scrimmage at five. I'll show a closer update of future cast for everyone with some specific, but again, that's not how it's going to completely play out, right? Um, anything this evening, you've gotta just look at the current radar, to be honest. Uh, it's gonna be nearly impossible to fully predict that. You can see the high pressure where the waves are flat on this, uh, but overall, wind and wave picking up this evening. Hazardous beach conditions, if you don't understand currents or surfing isn't something you do the water will be a little bit choppier it will be more dangerous the rip currents will be a little stronger but this is an extreme we're talking four five foot waves and then as we head into saturday wave heights get around two to four feet and then into sunday and monday we're back to around one to two foot waves and flatter conditions into the week ahead as high pressure that high pressure moves over us bringing the flatness back so let's go back 
to future cast. 5 p.m. is a time we definitely could have some rain in the area. So this is right, this is paused at 5 p.m. right now. And it, I don't, I can guarantee you it's not gonna look exactly like this. This is just one model run. But for anyone with scrimmages or after school activities or evening plans, don't cancel them. But checking the radar, having a way to check the radar, ktriplitv.com slash radar, I believe works. Let's see what if that does work before I start telling everyone to go there. Yes, it does work. This is an interactive radar. I believe you can, there's layers in the bottom right corner. I believe you can even add on tropical tracks and forecast cones and things like that. Uh, you can turn on lightning. So there is several lightning strikes showing up uh, in the offshore waters. South of Bevo, we have a lightning strike now. So it would be just a random bolt of lightning because this isn't like when we have those, those strong, nearly severe thunderstorms that were moving through end of May, early June, where they had like a ton of lightning strikes and it's just a lightning up the sky. This is more random. So it's honestly a little bit more dangerous because you may think, oh, the storm has no lightning. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, there's a lightning strike. Odds are it's mostly cloud to cloud, but you don't want to bet on your life essentially. So keep that in mind. Um, it's not a lot of lightning, but there is a chance of lightning this evening check the radar that's that's the best advice i can have for an hour to 30 minutes before any activity you're planning outside this evening because i would say from from three three is still mostly south closer to the valley but from from four to 11 p.m we have a decent shot at scattered storms across the coastal bend and that's going to kind of be our peak time frame so that's not the best I, I wish i could say yes you'll be fine or no you won't but weather forecasting isn't an exact science and i'm not going to pretend like it is here on this live stream uh, that's going to do it though for this update i went through everything i wanted to go through hopefully i was a little bit helpful uh, but ktriplitv.com radar does have a radar there's also great apps as well um, that are not our app that I'm not going to advertise right now, but I do advise having a way to check the radar if you are hosting or going to an event later on this evening just to see uh, how things have shaped up. That, of course, Chief Meteorologist Alan Holt will be in. He'll have the latest information at 5 and 6 p.m. And if anything is breaking or important ahead of that, he'll be on live as well. But I don't anticipate it anticipate it being that extreme right again this is our like lowest level of weather impact but it is a tropical system it had a chance a decent shot at becoming a tropical depression and just it ran out of time so it is very near the coast of brownsville south padre island now as we speak and once that center moves on shore then all bets are off but we still will get some rain out of it uh, thank you everyone for watching i'm meteorologist carly smith and this is going to